السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم ما بعد All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is no doubt our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to shower his choices of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. My dear brothers, sisters, the online viewers who may be tuning in via the uh, live streaming link as well as the television viewers, I welcome you all to the second session of the Messenger series where with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we hope to discuss the stories of the greatest individuals who have ever walked on the face of this earth, the Anbiya alayhi salatu wa salam, during this blessed month of Ramadan. It is indeed a blessed month, a month in which there is so much of change taking place. According to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Atakum shahru Ramadan. The month of Ramadan has come to you. Shahru Mubarak. It is a blessed month. During this month, the gates of Jannah are wide open. During this month, the gates of Jahannam are slammed shut. During this month, the shayateen, the devils are all shackled up. They are all locked up. Fihi layla. During this month, there is a night. خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ It is better than a thousand months. Allahu Akbar. مَنْ حُرِمَ خَيْرَهَا فَقَدْ حُرِمَ The individual who is deprived of its good is the one, is the utterly deprived individual. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to attain the blessed night of power, Laylatul Qadr. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, before I continue, with the story of Adam alayhi salatu was salam, there's something that I would like to uh, touch on and elaborate a bit. And this is in regard to Israeliyat. In other words, narrations that are attributed to the Banu Israel. Now who, are the, who were the Banu Israel? They were the children of Israel, i.e. the children of Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. The children of Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam. Now we have, when you go through the books of Tariqh, when you go through the books of Tafsir, you will come across many Israeliyat, many narrations that have been attributed to Banu Israel. Now can we accept these narrations? Can we accept these narrations? Scholars, rahimahumullah, have laid down a few conditions. Now let me mention the conditions very swiftly, as we might come across a few narrations in the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, as well as the stories of the, of the other Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. Condition number one is that if an Israeli narration, an Israelite narration, if it coincides and agrees with what we have in our Sharia, from the Nusus, from the texts of our Sharia, the Quran and the Sunnah. If it agrees, then we don't have a problem, we can accept it. If it agrees with what we have. Number two, if an Israeli narration does not agree or it clashes, it conflicts with what we have, then we won't accept the Israeli narration, we will reject it. The third condition or the third situation. If an Israeli narration does not clash nor agree, in the sense we don't have any textual evidence in regard to what that narration is mentioning, but nor does it clash or conflict with what we have uh, from our Nusus, from the Quran and the Sunnah, then according to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, hadithu an bani Israel wa la haraj. Then you can narrate from the Banu Israel, uh, no issues with it, as long as it does not conflict and clash with what we have from our Nusus. I hope it's clear. Now we, we move on to the story of Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Uh, we will continue from where we stopped uh, during the last session. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mentioned in the previous session that Allah azza wa jal created Adam alayhi salatu was salam on a Friday. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu was salam on a Friday. 
And then Allah Azza wa Jal, after creating Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, like we mentioned in the previous session, from something akin to potter's clay, mintween, Allah Azza wa Jal left Adam alayhi salatu wa salam without giving him life for 40 years. For 40 years, he was remaining in the state that he was uh, created, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah Azza wa Jal did not give him life. Now, when he was in that state, the angels, they were petrified because a hollow human being, not moving, no life in him, he was just like a statue. So the angels, whenever they looked at Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, they were petrified. So was Iblis. So was Iblis. We mentioned in the previous session, according to Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and other historians, his name was Azazil. He was also petrified. He was also petrified. So he started circling uh, Iblis, he started, going, uh, he started circling Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He kept on going around him, trying to figure out what's going on with Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He started tapping on him, he started knocking on him, and there was this hollow sound. I mean, when you tap on something hollow, you get that hollow sound that comes from it. Because there was nothing inside Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So this started to pique his curiosity, Iblis. He was wondering what's going on. And he thought, let me investigate further. And he went into the body of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. He went in through his nose and he came out from his rear, from his behind. He came out and then he said, he informed the angels, don't worry, don't fear. He is just hollow. There's nothing inside him. There's nothing inside Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Moving on. Allah azza wa jal honored Adam alayhi salatu wasalam with four things. Four things. Number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salatu wasalam with his own hands. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, our father, Abu al-Bashar, Allah azza wa jal created him with his own hands. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed his soul into him, into Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And then number three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angels to make sajda, to prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And finally, number four, Allah azza wa jal taught Adam alayhi salatu wasalam the names of everything. The names of everything which we shall discuss insha'Allah ta'ala. So the ayat we mentioned in the previous session, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا وَتَجَعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ So the angel said, Ya Allah, we glorify you, we will honor you, we will exalt you. Why are you creating creation that is going to shed blood and cause mischief and corruption? We mentioned all of this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamun. I know that which you do not know. Now after creating Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah azza wa jal, like we mentioned in the four things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after 40 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed life into Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salatu wa salam the names of everything. ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented him to the angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِهِ بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented the things that he showed Adam alayhi salatu wa salam to the angels. فَقَالَ أَنْبِئُونِهِ بِأَسْمَاءِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Angels, tell me the names of these things. إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you all speak the truth. Now in regard to this ayah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Mufassirun mentioned, آدم الأسماء كلها. Allah سبحانه وتعالى taught Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام the names of everything. كلها. The names of everything. Scholars go on to say until the day of قيامة the names of every single thing were taught to Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام. What is this? A mobile phone. More specifically, an iPhone. Right? Okay, an iPhone 6, 6 plus rather. Alright, so now what is this? Now do you think when Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was created, was this existing at that time? Uh, okay, just rewind 20 years back if someone told you iPhone, would it ring a bell? Now today, uh, you know, on Google, 
when you search apple you know the fruit doesn't come the red apple doesn't come when you search apple you know apple devices come things have evolved but the mufassir won't say until the day of qiyamah every single thing so that would mean iphone podium masjid microphone camera everything was taught to adam alayhi salatu wassalam wa allama adam al asma'a kullaha everything one opinion of the mufassir he was given so much of knowledge you can just imagine who was the teacher allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah azza wa jalla taught adam alayhi salatu wassalam everything and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked the malaika anbi'uni bi asma'i haula'i in kuntum sadiqin inform me of the names of these things if you all speak the truth what did they say qalu subhanak لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم. Glory be unto you, Ya Allah. لا علم لنا. We don't have knowledge. إلا ما علمتنا. Except that which you have taught us. إنك أنت العليم الحكيم. Verily you are the All Knower, the All Wise. This was the reply of the angels. And then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commands Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام. قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم فلما أنبئهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقل لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون أو آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم inform them of the names of these things فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم and when Adam عليه الصلاة والسلام informed them of the names of these things قال ألم أقول لكم الله سبحانه وتعالى said ألم ألم أقول لكم إني أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض did I not tell you that indeed I know the the unseen matters of the heavens and the earth وأعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون and I know what you reveal and what you have been concealing الله أكبر علام الغيوب الله سبحانه وتعالى. Now after this took place, now you must understand that Iblis was observing all of this. Shaitan was observing all of this, and now comes about the biggest command from Allah سبحانه وتعالى at that moment. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now commanded the angels, commanded them all, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ Prostrate unto Adam. Prostrate unto Adam. فَسَجَدُوا They all fell down in prostration. إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Except Shaitan. Now this is the beginning of the destruction of Azazil of Shaitan. Now before we go further, what was this sajda? Was it a sajda of ibadah? No, it was not a sajda of ibadah. Because as we all know, sajda of ibadah, prostration of worship, is only unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was a sajda of ta'zim, of respect, of honor, a mark of respect, veneration. And more importantly, it was a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when the malaika when they fell down in sajda to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, our father, in reality, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, they were worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know why? Why? Because they were obeying the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were prostrating to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. They're not worshipping Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. They're worshipping Allah by obeying the command of Allah. Because who commanded to worship, to prostrate to Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? Who commanded? Allah Azza wa Jal. He commanded them to prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So the minute they comply with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in reality they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say for example, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded us to prostrate to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had commanded us, then if we had, if we were to prostrate unto Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, it would be considered ibadah to Allah because we are, we are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us. We are not supposed to prostrate unto anybody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of prostration. But for the previous aqwam, for the previous nations, this 
sajda sajda ta'zim the sajda of honor and respect was made permissible as we will discuss in the story of yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam as well i'm sure some of you might be aware what happens towards the end his father his siblings all of them fall down in sajda but it was not a sajda of ibadah they were not worshiping yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam but rather it was a sajda to ta'zim they were honoring and respecting yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam i hope it's clear moving on fasajadu they all fell down in sajda except for one individual illa iblis aba wastakba he refused and he was proud he was arrogant وَكَانَ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ And he became from the kuffar, from the ones who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now comes about a question. Look at the ayah. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Let's translate it, you know, literally, directly. When we said to the angels, prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, they all prostrated except for Iblis. Now what do you understand from the ayah? Don't you think that there is a possibility or a kind of an understanding that or a possibility that Iblis could be from the Malaika? We commanded the angels prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. They all prostrated illa Iblis except for Iblis. Don't you think that it's giving the meaning that Iblis was from the angels? So this came up and scholars rahimahumullah they explained this particular issue because there were some people who started to claim and I'm, I'm sure you might, you might have even uh, come across it. I think it's the biblical version where they say even the devil was a fallen angel. Even the devil was a fallen angel. In the sense he was an angel, he fell after he disobeyed God. But now what we need to understand is that in Surah Al-Kahf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Allah makes it very clear. Allah Azza wa Jal clears all doubts. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسِ Once again, very similar ayah. And remember, when we said to the angels, prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, فَسَجَدُوا They prostrated illa Iblis, except for Iblis, كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِ and he was from the jinn. So all doubts are clarified here. He was not from the angels. He was never from the angels. He was always from the jinn. He was from the jinn. But as you all know, we mentioned in the previous session that he was taken captive by the angels and taken up to the heavens. And there he strove hard. He was a mujtahid. He strove hard and he started to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much that Allah Azza wa Jal raised him to the ranks of the angels but he was never from the angels. He used to be with the angels because he worshipped, worshipped Allah so much. But this disobedience of his, this one command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he refused to obey Allah Azza wa Jal. He became proud, he became arrogant and this was the cause of his destruction. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from pride and arrogance. I mean, Okay, now the minute Iblis refused to prostrate unto Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah Azza wa Jal, he questions Iblis. And this is in Surah Al-A'raf. قَالَ مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهِ خَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questions Iblis. O oh, Iblis, ma mana'aka alla tasjuda id amartuk? What prevented you that you did not prostrate when I commanded you? And now look at the reply of Iblis. Qala ana khayrum min. I am better than him. Why should I prostrate? I am better than him. Khalaqtani min narin wa khalaqtahu min tween. You created me from fire. And you created him out of clay. I am better than him. You see the pride? You see the arrogance? And scholars, rahimahumullah, mention that Shaitan, Iblis, was the first individual to discriminate. The first individual to discriminate. I am better than you. We whites are better than the blacks. Oh, you are a brown person. Who cares? He was the first person to discriminate Allah Akbar. Inna akramakum ma'ind Allahi atqaakum Your color does not matter. Your lineage does not matter. 
your background does not matter, where you come from does not matter. The noble from amongst you are the ones who have the most amount of taqwa. This is the only criteria, Allahu Akbar. But shaitan, he was the first one to discriminate. And what made him discriminate? What made him, what pushed him into the abyss of discrimination? Nothing other than pride and jealousy. Jealousy. He was jealous. Why is he getting all of the attention? Where did he come from? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching him everything? Why is he going to be a khalifa on earth? You understand? So he had this jealousy in him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from that self-destructive quality. I mean. So from this we understand, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that it was jealousy and hatred that plunged Iblis into the abyss of evil and darkness that he is in. In terms of jealousy, Rasulullah is reported to have said that jealousy, يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطب That jealousy destroys your good deeds just as how a fire gobbles up firewood. You know firewood is dry generally. When you burn firewood, it's dry. And the minute you light it, it crackles and the fire gobbles it up. Likewise, jealousy destroys your good deeds. It is a self-destructive quality that destroys an individual. It eats up an individual from within. As human beings, you and I, we have it naturally. We have it naturally. But the important factor is that we must not give in to that self-destructive quality. We must control it. We must contain it. That is the challenge. There are two forms of jealousy. A prohibited form and a permitted form. The permitted form is known as a dhibta. This jealousy, let me start off with the prohibited form. The prohibited form is the minute you see something by someone. Like say for example, you see someone is very wealthy. You see, someone is very wealthy. You look at him and you start envying him. Oh, how I wish I had that wealth. He should not have it, I should have it. You wish for the wealth and you wish for the destruction of that individual. You wish that that ni'mah, that the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be plucked from that individual so that you may have it. This is the prohibited form of jealousy. On the other hand, the permitted form, ghibta, according to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who taught us about ghibta, this permissible form is when you desire it, but you don't wish for the destruction of that individual. You wish, oh, how I wish I had that kind of money so that I could do good deeds, so that I could dish out charity, so that I can become a philanthropist like him. You wish for the same wealth, but you don't wish for the destruction of that individual. This is a, or for example, you look at a scholar, you look at a, 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 a da'i, and you wish that, oh, how I wish I was like him. How I wish I was reaching out to people like him. But you also wish good for that individual. This is ghibta. Say someone, uh, you know, conducts salah, he has a good voice. You wish, oh, how I wish I had a good voice like him. And may Allah bless that individual as well. You pray for him whilst wishing for that quality. This is a permissible form. But to wish for destruction for that individual, it is an impermissible permissible form, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So moving on my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, now what happens? After this erroneous and arrogant statement from shaitan, from Iblis, Allah Azza wa Jal banishes and exiles Iblis. In Surah, surah Sa'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, قَالَ فَاخْرُجْ مِنْهَا فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately commands to Iblis, get out from here. فَخْرُجْ minha, get out from here. فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ For verily you are an outcast, you are banished. فَإِنَّكَ رَجِيمٌ وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ And verily, my curse is on you. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةِ my curse is on you till the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. وَإِنَّ عَلَيْكَ لَعْنَةِ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الدِّينِ Allahu Akbar. The minute Allah Azza wa Jal commanded Iblis to do this, now look at what Shaitan says. قَالَ رَبِّ فَأَنذِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He says, My Lord, give me time till the day of Qiyamah. Pause for a moment. Look. After such arrogance, after such a display of arrogance, now he prays to Allah. This is a dua. Rabbi, O oh Allah, فَأَنْذِرْنِي إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Give me respite, give me time until the day of Qiyamah. Look at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He answers the dua. He answers the dua. He says, قَالَ فَإِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْظَرِينَ Fine. You are of those who have been given respite. 
But now look at shaitan, what does he say? Even after that, what does he say? قَالَ فَبِعِزَّتِكَ لَأُغْوِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ He promises now, فَبِعِزَّتِكَ by your might, Ya Allah, I will surely mislead them all. Look at the arrogance, look at the pride. He was an individual who strove so hard, worshipped Allah so much, and Allah Azza wa Jal raised him to the ranks of the Malaika, even though he was not from the Malaika. But this arrogance, this pride of his destroyed him utterly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. He went on to say, I will mislead them all. Except for your slaves who are sincere from them, the ones who are mukhlisun, the ones who have ikhlas in them, except for them, I will mislead them all. May Allah Azza wa fill all of our hearts with ikhlas. Ameen. In Surah A'raf, he states, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي لَأَقْعُدَنَّ لَهُمْ صِرَاطَقَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ He says, he blames Allah now. فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Ya Allah, because you sent me astray For his mistake, now he blames Allah فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي Because you sent me astray Surely I will sit in wait against them Against the human beings Where? On your straight path Whenever they try to get onto the straight path I will be there and I will mislead them ثُمَّ لَأَتِيَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ وَعَنْ أَيْمَانِهِمْ وَعَنْ شَمَائِلِهِمْ وَلَا تَجِدُ أَكْثَرَهُمْ شَاكِرِينَ Then I will come to them from before them, in the sense in front of them, from behind them, from their right and from their left, and you will not find them as shakirin. You will not find, find them as uh, thankful individuals. You will not find them as thankful ones. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us all thankful ones. Ameen. So he said, I'll come from behind, I'll come from front, I'll come from, right, from their right and from their left. He did not mention that I'll come from the top. And scholars, rahimahumullah, mentioned like Ibn Abbas عنهما, and others, that he did not mention from the top. Because the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon his slave from the top. But if it, all other directions, I will attack them. Allahu Akbar. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, from this we understand that there are many, many forces of evil at work. Shaitan is our sworn enemy, arch enemy, shaitan, the devil. And he, his mission, you know, in the morning when you get up, what do you plan? You plan out your day, you know, I need to go to work. I need to purchase this, I need to do this, I need to do that, I need to go to the masjid. You plan out your day, right? Do you know what shaitan does every single day? His mission is, I need to mislead this child of Adam. I need to mislead that child of Adam. This is the mission of the shayateen. They wake up every single day to mislead us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, فَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِن دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُو Clearly, they are your enemies. Allahu Akbar. Shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all from his snares and traps. Ameen. So his plan, his mission is to mislead us. So as believers, as slaves of Allah, we need to protect ourselves from these forces of evil. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not leave us groping in the dark. He taught us precautionary measures to take to protect ourselves. Such as the morning, evening adhkar. Adhkar sabahi wal masa. The adhkar, they are like an armor, a fortress to protect you. The fortress of a believer. The minute you recite the adhkar in the morning, the minute you recite the adhkar in the evening, you are protected from these evil forces. Surah Al-Baqarah, Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, along the lines of these words, don't make your house like a graveyard. Recite Surah Al-Baqarah in that house, the devil will flee from that house. If your house is being disturbed by the shayateen, by the devils, read Surah Al-Baqarah, at least portions of Surah Al-Baqarah, the devil will run away, will flee away from your house. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our houses, I mean. Ayatul Kursi, famous hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, I'm sure most of you are aware. Shaitan himself teaches Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, you know the story where he tried to uh, steal from the uh, Bayt al-Mal, the wealth of Zakah? And he teaches Abu Huraira radiallahu an, the individual who reads Ayatul Kursi in the evening, you get a personal bodyguard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A personal bodyguard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What more do we want? 
If the president of the country calls you up and tells you, brother, I'm going to appoint my personal bodyguard for you, just one day, 24 hours, how safe will you feel? You'll be like, wow, I'm the man. You get a chip on your shoulder. I've got the president's right hand man next to me. Allah Azza wa Jal will appoint a bodyguard. Allahu Akbar. You read it in the evening until morning you have this bodyguard with you. And then his shift changes. He is relieved from his duty. He has to go rest. Just kidding. But then you have to read again in the morning. If you read it in the morning until evening, another fresh bodyguard from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu's hadith, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he confirms the fact after Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu went and told him, Ya Rasulullah, this individual said this. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, He was a liar. He is a liar, but this time he has spoken the truth. In other words, Shaytan in general, he is a liar, but in, in regard to this, he has spoken the truth. So we must try to read our morning, evening adhkar, adhkar al-sabahi wal masa, read as much Quran as possible, and read Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Al-Kursi, all of these selected passages where uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us to read. La ilaha illa Allah wahda, la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadeer. A very powerful dhikr, morning and evening. We're supposed to read it a minimum of 10 times or the maximum of 100 times. You get so many rewards. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to act upon these teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. The few minutes that I have, I'll quickly mention a little about Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam and then we'll wrap off inshaAllah ta'ala. Now Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was alone. He was alone. And now he's wandering about, feeling very very lonely now because he's all alone. I mean just imagine, just think of this, not Jannah, think of Maldives, not, not Maldives, rather Mali. What a small island in Mali, right? If you were the only person in Mali, just one person, we have all of this, this tiny Mali anyway, yeah? If you were the only individual living in Mali, how would you feel? Lonely, bored, you get up every single day. What are you going to do? As human beings, it is part and parcel that we need to socialize. I'm not talking about Facebook socializing. We need to really socialize. We need to interact. We need to talk to one another. We need to, you know, have friends, have family. This is how we have been created. So Adam alayhi salatu was feeling lonely, all alone. And just imagine, Mali is one thing, Jannah is another thing. How worst Jannah is, Allahu Akbar. And he's all alone. He is all alone. So what happens? One day he sleeps. And then he, when he gets up, he sees someone beside him. You just imagine his expression, the first female next to him. When he, he was shocked, he was shocked. And then the angels sh saw the, the expression on his face and they asked him, they're still checking him, you know, Ya Adam, can you name her? Or can you name this, what you're seeing in front of you? Who is this? Immediately Adam alayhi salatu wasalam said, Hawa, Hawa. Why Hawa? Because she was created from something, min shayin hayy from a living thing. Now Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam, our mother, Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam, Eve, she was created from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah Azza wa Jalla created her from Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. According to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she was created from the rib bone, from the rib bone of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Hawa alayhi salatu wasalam. In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, treat women gently. Istawsu bin nisa'i khayrah. Treat women gently because they have been created from the rib bone along the lines of these words. They have been created from the rib bone and if you try to straighten that rib bone, if you try, you see this is, okay this is not flexible but this part is flexible, you can move it around. But something stiff, something stiff, if you try to straighten it, what will happen? It will break. It will break and that breakage will be talaq. You will have to divorce her if you try to straighten her. So treat them gently. Another narration, Rasulullah said they are fragile vessels. Fragile vessels. We need to treat them gently. Our women folk. We need to treat them gently, carefully, especially our wives. At times we are gentlemen outside with our friends and other people. But at home, we are so rough. My dear brother, your wife 
is your soulmate, your companion beside you, who's going to live with you in this world as well as the hereafter, inshallah ta'ala. If you are not kind and good towards her, look at the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Khayrukum, khayrukum, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the said, the best from amongst you all are the ones who are the best to their family. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahli, wa ana khayrukum li ahli. The best from amongst you all are the ones who are the best to their family, in other words, to their wives, وَأَنَا خَيْرُكُمْ لِأَهْلِي And I am the best from you all towards my family. Allahu Akbar. So we need to treat our women for with the best of treatments. One incident. A man was once finding it very difficult with his wife. You know, very difficult to you know, handle her and things like that. So he thought of going and complaining to Umar radiallahu anhu. He thought of going and complaining to Umar radiallahu anhu. He thought of Umar radiallahu anhu. He will have a solution for me, or rather he will discipline my wife perhaps. So he goes to Umar radiallahu anh, he goes to the house of Umar radiallahu anh, very confidently. He goes and he's about to knock on the door of Umar radiallahu anh's house. He's about to knock, his hand is about to touch the door. And suddenly he, he hears the voice of a woman. And he realizes that's the voice of Umar radiallahu anh's wife. And she is talking in a very loud voice to Umar radiallahu anh. So he listened for a while and he thought, looks like Umar radiallahu anhu is in a bigger soup than I am. And he turns and he leaves. Umar radiallahu anhu senses that somebody came by the door and left. So he quickly runs out and he sees this man going. He calls him, Ya Rajul, come. Why? What brought you to my doorstep? Uh, the man, ah, no, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. I was just passing by. No, no, you came for a reason. Tell me why you came. No, no, I was just passing by. Nothing at all. Umar radiallahu anhu then tells him, you must tell me why you came. And then he tells him, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, I was having a bit of a, you know, a few problems with my wife. And I thought I'll come to you to seek advice. And when I came to your house, I was about to knock the door. And then I realized that you are in a bigger soup than I am. Then Umar radiallahu anhu went on to say, she is my wife. She cooks for me. She washes my clothes. She keeps my house clean. And when I'm not there, she looks after my wealth. She looks after my children. She looks after my house. So what's the harm in just listening to a little that they have to say? When she's doing all of this, when in reality your wives, my dear brothers in Islam, don't have to do all of this. This is not their responsibility. In reality, you must employ someone to wash your clothes. You must employ someone to clean your house. Or you must do it yourself. But out of their own goodwill, out of their own good nature, they are doing it. So we must respect this. We must be thankful. And we must treat them nicely, gently, according to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to do so. Now, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam, they live in Jannah. They live in Jannah. With that, we conclude uh, today's session. The next session tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we will discuss how shaitan fooled and whispered and you know caused so much of corruption and made Adam alayhi salatu wa salam and Hawa alayhi salatu wa salam disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they were sent down from Jannah to earth inshallah ta'ala in the next session. Jazakumullah khair. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.